deliverer of the Hebrew people, but now he was a captive himself. Till this moment in his life, he never served anyone. He was not a slave. But now, he actually made himself a captive. He actually made himself a captive. Moses must have thought that all was lost. Just imagine, in that particular moment, now no one knows 40 years, Mo let's talk about Moses' first month in Midian. He would have thought that he has lost everything. He had every good thing in Pharaoh's palace. He had a calling from God. But now, for him in the first month, or maybe in the second month, and third month, he must be feeling everything is lost. I lost everything. Does that happen with you guys? When life takes you on a journey which you have not planned for, you think, oh man, everything is lost. I was so well settled in that company. I was so well, uh, well settled in, uh, before I was married. I'm just joking. But what I'm saying is, like, have you ever felt this? When God takes you on a journey or when you end up on a detour because of your own mistake and you would think, how can I do this? How could I have done this? I have lost all the benefits which I had before. So it was his 40 years in the desert that prepared him to be what he, to be what he was destined to become, God's servant to deliver the Israelites out of bondage. Now God, for Moses, this may look like a detour. For Moses, this may look like that all is lost. But for God, this was actually a plan. This was actually something God was going to use to make him a, the perfect servant of God. Or at least closest to the perfect servant of God. Before he experienced this detour, Moses lacked two essential things. That God requires for his servants. One is... I think it's there. So this Moses was a privileged man. We have already learned that Moses uh, is being prepared. But these are the two essential things but which Moses was missing. One was empathy and the other was humility. To be God's servant. Moses would cultivate both these fruitful attributes while in, the, uh, while in the desert land of Midian. He would cultivate these two, uh, these two qualities in him in this journey, in this detour of 40 years. How he does that? We know that Moses had a sense of connection with the Hebrew people prior to the, this detour in Midian. But while Moses had a sense that he was a Hebrew and ethnically identified with them, Prior to his detour, he lacked any real empathy for them. He lacked any real uh, sense of uh, relation with them. Moses was a Hebrew who grew up in Pharaoh's house. He knew nothing of the slavery and suffering of his bondage, of his people. But then in Midian, he found himself in a form of bondage. He had been taken away from his land He knew nothing of the slavery and suffering of his people, but then he had been taken from his land and placed in a strange land among a strange people. He had lost his privileges. He could now identify and empathize with the Hebrew people whom he was, uh, whom he was destined to deliver. He can now actually relate to the people how bondage is, how slavery is in this journey, because of this journey. Empathy is one of the qualities God demands from those who are called to be his servants. A deliverer in God's kingdom is required to identify and relate to those he is delivering. And who can you think of any other person in the Bible who actually identified with the people they came to save? Who can you think of? Can you think of any other name? Jesus, right? And so you realize... Jesus had all the privileges in heaven. He was and is the son of God. And you realize he, because he wanted to save us, a lot of us normally say, Jesus could have, if he wanted to save me, he could have saved me from heaven itself, right? 
why he had to come down but we realize from this portion in moses life that moses had to go through bondage go through slavery a form of slavery to actually empathize with his own people now that doesn't mean that jesus did not empathize with us before he came to earth he empathized with us and that is the reason he came to earth in the form of flesh and wo- allowed himself to be born of a woman and so you realize jesus related to us before he actually saved us in hebrews 11 verses 24 26 it says by faith moses when he had grown up refused to be known as the son of pharaoh's daughter he chose to be mistreated along with the people of god rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin he regarded disgrace for the sake of christ as of greater value than the treasures of egypt because he was looking ahead to his re- reward and so you read new testament and you read what happened with moses really you would realize hey these people are actually praising moses for this detour in his life Pe- hebrews is actually saying that he did that on purpose he did that on but if you read it doesn't really look like that he did that on purpose right and so you realize moses in his hastiness whatever he did he did not plan to do it but when you look up, look into that same situation thousands of years later in the new testament people were able to say that moses chose to be mistreated along with the people of god when he saw the hebrew being beaten by the egyptian he had a sense of ethnic identity but in median he began to embody a sense of ethnic empathy it was in the desert of median that moses truly learned what it was like to be a hebrew no Mo- moses also learned humility in median how before median moses was full of himself he knew that he had all the privileges in median he learned to be empty of self it would be very easy to become full of yourself if you are raised in a privileged family or a privileged situation like moses was if you ha- if you are coming from a family where you had actually no problem growing up you had almost all the things that you asked for you realize that you have some sort of uh, privileged entitlement kind of uh, upbringing and that mentality actually comes also when you are in your job so you don't really take serious of your job you tend to be like you, i'm here only till i want to be here rather than it's actually necessary and so i don't know if it's true of you guys it's it's partially true of me like and so i'm i'm always like hey if doesn't if anything doesn't work i'll go back and probably join my father's business or do that and that. but i don't think now it is possible too late but earlier i used to think like that okay if this job doesn't work uh, these people don't really uh, like even though i'm a fresher i'm assuming i'm always used to be in that mindset if these people don't really respect me i'll just leave the job and go back what what's the worst can happen i'll probably be taken care of when i go home and so you realize in some in that privilege because of that growing up in privilege in that you rarely a person will have humility but moses learned humility when he had nothing in median while our culture sometimes admires and advances people who are full of themselves our culture is like that these days we admire people who are actually full of themselves god operates a very different type of economy god requires his appointed leaders to empty themselves of pride and privilege god seeks a humble and contrite heart and hates a prideful heart god calls us to empty ourselves of ourselves interestingly moses began to understand this principle of emptiness at a place of filling and so uh, if you read the portion you realize moses eventually ended up saving uh, the daughter of uh, a midianite priest and uh, he actually helped uh, the daughters to even he he watered he gave water to the flocks also so you realize moses this person who never worked this person who actually never served anyone before he was in uh, pharaoh's palace now 
he suddenly was changed and he act actually ended up serving these midianite uh, the daughters of midianite and so and they were also being harassed by the shepherds nearby they were not allowing uh, these daughters to take water and uh, water their flock as well but moses actually ended up saving them but if you see the track record of moses how do you think moses would actually save these people he would actually just kill the shepherds right at least his track record says that but he chose not to be hasty this time he chose not to kill humility entered him him as soon as he lost his privileges because he was in the place of privilege he did not have that humility but because now he was a fugitive he had no entitlement he humility just entered him and so you realize guys uh, guys and girls and friends brothers and sister as soon as you let go of the privileges and the entitlement that can really fuel us humility would enter us in 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 that same moment we have to let go of the entitlement that probably our jobs will bring our statuses will bring our spouses will bring to us we have to empty ourselves of that pride to become humble in front of god now think about moses's action for a moment he had just left egypt where he was served by others and had never really engaged in any hard labor yet here we find moses serving a group of foreign women he took the role of a servant when he entered midian he began to serve rather than be served he emptied himself of self and began to put the interest of others before his own now moses and if you read numbers chapter 12 verse 3 he is described in these terms okay moses is described so well in all the other places then in his life and he is described in numbers 12 verse 3 now moses was a very humble man more okay this line you have to really listen to it okay more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth moses is described like this that he is the most humble man on the face of the earth it was in the desert of midian that moses learned to be a servant he learned about humility and its importance in god's kingdom moses's detour in midian was not wasted time it was time redeemed by god to prepare his servant and so you realize even though in the beginning we talked about detours and how detours can be frustrating our detours are something that you not wish for but god used this 40 year detour in the life of moses to prepare him to actually make him the servant that he wanted to make him the most humble man on the face of the earth just imagine this detour would have looked like a waste of time in the beginning but in the end moses is being described like this so it is worth pausing to note how these two qualities of empathy and humility are not only prerequisites for leadership in god's kingdom but are also the marks of the mature christian life all christians are called to cultivate empathy and humility let's read philippians chapter 2 verse 2 to 4 it says i'll read it it says therefore if you have any encouragement from being united with christ if any comfort from his love if any common sharing in the spirit if any tenderness and compassion then make joy complete by being like minded having the same love being one in spirit and of one mind do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others above yourself not looking to your own interest but but each of you to the interest of the others like moses we are called to move the focus of ourselves and instead consider the lives and circumstances and needs and interest of others we are called to em- we are called to empathy similarly as christians we are also called to humility humility involves self emptying just as we learned from the life of moses 
and jesus makes it quite clear that the christian life requires that we first empty ourselves so that we may find ourselves in matthew chapter 10 verse 39 it says whoever finds their life will lose it and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it this is this is this looks easy to read i don't know if you really if you really think that this is easy to follow jesus is saying if you lose your life for my sake you will find it but we are all behind finding our lives on our own we are not we are not in that state of losing our life but jesus taught us us to do something really opposite it is as if we are like a glass and we begin by being filled with ourselves the glass full of self must be poured out like water and then and only then can we begin to be filled with christ the idea that fullness begins with emptiness is one of the many paradoxes of christian life so the question is what is in the glass of your life are you like moses before midian filled with self love or pride or have you learned what moses has learned the fullness of life with god is found only when we empty our lives of self love now uh, let's read of how jesus had a life without detours now we were talking about detours and destinations and we realize moses had a life where he had to go through a detour to actually fully become the servant of god but jesus on the other hand did not have to go through any detours he was always on track with god he was always on the path that god had planned for him unlike moses jesus required no detours and he never deviated from the path of god's will why am i telling you guys this when the only reason i'm telling you this is we cannot and should not put our faith in the lives of patriarchs like moses we should put our life our faith and our lives in the hands of jesus who had to go through no detours to be the full servant of god to be the perfect lamb of god because all of us all of us will fall short just like moses fell short and just like all the other patriarchs fell short but because we put our faith and our trust in jesus we will claim the same the same privileges that jesus claims when we go in front of god on the day of judgment we have seen that moses required a detour in his life to equip him with the re- requisite attributes to become a ser- successful servant leader in god's kingdom <coughs> like moses jesus was also sent to deliver his people out of the bondage but jesus willingly submitted to becoming like us so that he could deliver us he understood that he had to identify and empathize with the people he came to save in hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 it says for this reason he had to be made like them or like his brothers fully human in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to god and that and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people in galatians chapter 4 verses 4 to 5 it says he was willing to be born of a woman and born under the law that he himself made he allowed himself to be born under the law that he himself made in order to redeem those under the law so that we might receive adoption to sonship just imagine how much thought jesus put in in his saving us how much planned his journey was how much inclined his journey was with the path that god chose for him unlike moses jesus required no detours and he never deviated from the path of god's will it is this glorious reality that gives us hope and assurance in our salvation our redeemer unlike moses never deviated from the course of his calling and because of his steadfast unswerving and perfect obedience we are now delivered 
from the bondage of slavery to sin. Moses only delivered his people for a short amount of time. Could only deliver his people for a short amount of time. But Jesus, 2,000 years before ago, he came and he delivered us throughout the eternity. And in that confidence, guys, we now live. Just as Moses delivered Israelites, Jesus has delivered all of us. We don't need to live in slavery. There is a God who empathizes with us. There is a God who was humble enough to take my sin and go to the cross. And he did that for you guys as well. So with that as a reminder, let us close this time in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the life of Moses. We thank you that you allowed these patriarchs to go through a similar lifestyle just like we go now, Father God. But we cannot put our hope in them. We, will, we can only put our hope in the perfect Son of God that is Jesus for us. That you, that Jesus, you on your own decided to come down and obey the law that you only made, Jesus, for our sake. That you actually fulfilled God's wrath for our sake on that cross, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Even as we go through in our lives through detours, we know, Father God, that you are making us mature, that you are working in us, put, filling us with empathy and humility, Lord Father. I pray, Lord Father, for all of us over here, Lord Father. Help us to have a servant heart, Lord Father, so that you can use us in the way that you plan to use us, Lord Father. Help us to empty ourselves of ourselves. Help us to be filled with you, Lord Father. Help us to not seek our own life, but to lose it so that we can find life in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us. That your, not just your death and your resurrection, but even your entire life, even your entire journey with, your, with the patriarchs and with us, leads us, encourages us to follow you, Lord Jesus. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.